Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition, Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet, read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Human Lasers, written by Colossal Renders. You can't see lasers in space. This wasn't one of those human sci-fi movies. This is real life. And Trilly knew that in real life, lasers aren't blue, glowing death rays, not in the vacuum of space. If a laser is to be seen, the photons must reach the observer's eyes, and the point of the laser is that all the light ends up on the target. And lasers don't make explosions, they make burn marks or even holes. So, what was he looking at? Let's backtrack a little. Everything was going wrong, and all Trahill could do was stare at the tack map helplessly. The collective ships were attacking, hordes of biodrones flying like missiles towards the outmatched Hyterian science fleet. Humans' ships were accelerating at full burn towards the battle, but they were too far away. Trilly cursed the fleet captain for not letting the human send support ships ahead of them. Ambassador Laurent listened to a message over his neural transplant before relaying the information to Trahilly. Command is sending a message to the enemy ships using the hose high Terran codex that you gave us. Let's hope they listen. Trilly thought that it was useless, but anything was better than nothing right now. His breath quickened as he watched the drones cross the void, getting closer and closer to the fleet. The human ships weren't fast enough. They wouldn't get there in time. The comms request reached the enemy fleet, and Trilly could only hope that it would interest them enough to call off the first volley. Please. Please! There was no response. The drones continued on the path. Wait. No. Trilly watched as the drones veered off their path away from the fleet and towards the closest group of human ships. They don't have defenses against the biodrones. He watched in horror as the drones closed the gap. They started disappearing as the ship's defensive cannons disabled them at a surprising speed. But it didn't matter. Their payload was already delivered. As each drone was shot, they burst apart into a cloud of genetically engineered microbes, their momentum carrying them into the ranks of human ships. One by one, the icons for the human ships blinked out as each was torn apart by a swarm of microbes engineered to chew through metal, composites, and anything else in their way. Trilly couldn't look. This was their fault. They were the ones who dragged the humans into the crossfire. Trilly, it's fine. There is no one on those ships. Wait, what? Seeing his confusion, Lauren continued. The ships are piloted by AIs. Uh, never mind. Now's not the time. Just know that nobody died. Trilly looked at Lauren quizzically, but didn't press further. Just at that moment, a second salvo of drones were fired, aimed for the science fleet. At the same time, the remaining human ships had joined up with the science fleet, and another human fleet of ships were heading towards the collective fleet with more following behind. All those aliens done goofed. Now we get to bring the fight to them instead of playing on defense. So what's the plan? What weapons will you be utilizing? Missiles and lasers, most likely. They're not in the most modern weapons, but they're what we have on hand. The actual military fleet are still on the other side of the system. Wait, lasers? Like focused beams of light? Trelly was giving Laurent an incredulous look again. Yeah, why? They used to use them in the movies all the time. Yes, I've seen your movies. And they were woefully inaccurate. Everyone knows you can't see laser beams in space. There's nothing for it to scatter off of. Well, I wouldn't say nothing. Space isn't a perfect vacuum. And they heat things, not make them explode. All right, yes, the movies are inaccurate. And we all know that. But we also know that lasers, in fact, do work. And how? It's light, electromagnetic radiation. Even a focused, high-powered beam can be easily and completely reflected. Otherwise, we would not be using photon drives for propulsion. You can't possibly be able to deflect every wavelength completely with ease. Total quantum level deflection of all wavelengths is still very hard to achieve, and has too many limitations in other aspects. Trudy just stared at the human. What? Can your ships deflect lasers with 100% efficiency? Laurent asked incredulously. Yes. How? Photon absorption fields are effective with low-powered light sources and give our ships a wide range of temperature tolerances. Well, our hulls can be made fully reflective for stronger-powered sources. 
It has been standard technology for centuries, with primitive photon field technology developed before we even reached space, and total reflection shortly after the unification of the fundamental forces. Rap! I am assuming that these ships also have such technology. Correct. The old collective technology is around half a century behind the Hyterian Union, and their ships don't have the best materials technology, but lasers would still be ineffective. The floor shifted as the battle cruiser they were on started accelerating. Ambassador Laurent quickly relayed the new information to Battle Command through his mental implant. Keep our ships outside their dry plumes. We aren't nearly as well protected as them. Turning his attention back to Trilly, Laurent grinned. Luckily for us, there are other ways to inflict damage with lasers. Trilly was confused. What was the human talking about? There's only two ways light can damage a ship either through irradiation, which the collective ships were properly defended against, or momentum, but they wouldn't possibly have the level of power. Yeah, why not? If it doesn't work, we still have other options. Besides, Command thinks it'll work, and we'll be dropping quite a few missiles as well. Frilly sighed. An action that was shared between humans and Hyterians. This is the most stupid offensive plan that I have ever heard. You might be better off throwing rocks at them. Perhaps, but well, let's just see how this plays out. And with that, the viewport in front of them switched to the view from the main camera array on the human light bomber. The collective ships were points of light in the distance, quickly becoming bigger and bigger. Suddenly, hundreds of missiles appeared, each highlighted by a red dot. They fanned out from the enemy formation, closing in on the human ships, growing closer and closer like a sandstorm on the horizon. The view rotated as the bomber put itself into a spin. Its point of fence cannons were into life. The first missiles flew into the human ranks, and the PDCs opened fire, shooting superheated pellets doubling as heat sinks for the ship. Distant explosions could be seen as the missiles were shredded one by one. The bomber rocked as a missile detonated close to it. Debris from the battle bounced off its hull. A blue fireball erupted as the human ship blinked off the tack map. Red dots disappeared by the dozens, yet there were hundreds more. A storm of missiles growing denser every second. One of them got a bit too close, and the explosion disabled one of the PDCs. But the bomber kept going. The human ships had covered a third of the space between them and the collective ships. As the onslaught thinned, the bomber started firing its own missiles, one by one. They dropped from the bomber in a spiral pattern, falling back behind before their thrusters fired to life and they shot forward. The other bombers did the same, and the volley of missiles shot towards the distant cluster of dots that was the enemy. Then, an electric field charge from the collective fleet went off, and five of the human ships blinked out. There was no explosion, no spectacular visuals. The ships simply stopped functioning as every single circuit in them simply melted. Seeing this development, the collective fleet started dumping the charges by the dozens. No oh, shit! The human formation immediately shifted, spreading apart, dodging away from the anti-electronic charges. Then came the biodromes, the same ones that had torn through the first human ships like nothing. The humans were taking casualties. Icons started blinking out on the tack map. First, it was the larger, less maneuverable battleships, then the smaller destroyers and bombers. The view on the viewsport blinked and switched to another view from a small frigate. The human ships started firing defensive missiles, but it wasn't enough. At this pace, the human fleet would be annihilated before their missiles even hit the collective ships. A flash, a blue streak, one of the collective artillery ships disappeared from the tack mac. The viewport zoomed in on its wreckage. The hull cleaved clean through. What was that? Ah! There's our laser! That's not a laser. You can't see lasers in space. He knew that. He knew the human movies were simply false depictions, born in a time when most of their species didn't even know the basic science. There are no bright laser beams in space, because if something is to be seen, the photons must reach the observer's eye, and the point of lasers that all of the light ends up at the target. And lasers don't make explosions, they make bird marks, or even holes. So what did he just witness? Then it happened again, and realization finally hit him. The humans are crazy, he thought. The human movies were never meant to be accurate. They were fiction. Everyone knew that. Lasers were supposed to be invisible in space, because there was almost nothing for them to scatter off of. 
and they didn't cause explosions because they exerted almost no physical force. Almost. But the humans had made that fiction into reality through sheer power, as they had a tendency to do, which resulted in a scene in front of him. A streak of blue, a beam so powerful as to scatter off their literal dust particles in the near vacuum of space. It connected to one of the collective ships, reflecting off the hull. The ship was physically thrown backwards from the sheer momentum of the photons as the hole was punched through its side. The laser, now no longer impeded by its hull, instantly vaporized the interior of the ship into a cloud of superheated plasma, which exploded in a bright flash. Here's a scene straight out of a human sci-fi movie. Trilly was speechless. The collective ships had stopped firing and seemed to be stuck as to what to do. Another streak of blue, another flash. Then Lauren spoke up again, bringing him back to the present. Hey, Trilly, you said the collective ships have inferior materials. Trilly replied absentmindedly, still focused on the scene unfolding in front of him. That is correct. The collective ships had finally broken out of their trance and were taking evasive maneuvers, utilizing the time delay to make aiming the lasers impossible. But three out of their five artillery ships had already been destroyed, along with their supply of biodrones and electric field charges. Although they are still stronger than human ships. Ah, well, doesn't really matter that much. We're in range for the kinetics. Kinetics? Freddy turned his attention off the battle to the human. Yeah, let's throw some rocks. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnolds, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azricol. Thank you very much.